are going to try to clarify the difference between demand and quantity demanded. It's actually fairly straightforward. It's just in economics, we try to make everything as complicated as we can because that way economists have jobs. So here it goes. We've got basically demand curve, label everything right, quantity, price, and a good label is always important. So princess U, okay? Princess unicorn doll. Um, typically, the price of the princess unicorn doll is $25, okay? Carry that out, and it tells us a specific quantity that is demanded. So one of the things we have to make sure we remember is that the demand curve is every quantity that is at every price. So the demand curve is the whole thing, okay? This entire curve is the demand. But this point on the curve right here that corresponds with a specific price, this point refers to a specific quantity demanded. So since it corresponds to specific prices, if we were to lower the price to say $20, Okay, that $20 will correspond to a completely different quantity on the same demand curve. So, so far, what I need you to understand is that the quantity demanded is just the amount that people want to buy at a specific price. Whereas, again, the demand refers to all quantities at all prices. So, whenever the price changes, let's write this down. Changes in price lead to changes in quantity demanded, okay? They do not, let's, let's put an X over this, they do not change demand, okay? That does not happen. So what does change demand? Or what would a change in demand actually look like? Well, if demand were to change, that means there's gonna be, let's say, let's say demand increases. That means now, at the $25 price, see the price doesn't change necessarily, but at that same $25 price, there are more people who would like to buy it. That would indicate to us that the demand actually increased, okay? Or, let's say for example, you keep the price at 25 and fewer people wanna buy it, okay? that would indicate to us that the demand has actually decreased. It's pretty straightforward, right? So let's go and look at the factors that would actually change the demand, okay? So we'll start over. Now that we understand, well, let's double check though. Okay, we understand now that price changes change the quantity demanded. That's why it is when you change the price, you get a point-to-point -point movement along the curve, okay? Whenever demand changes, you change the actual curve. All right, so let's, let's, let's make the demand change and, and for whatever reason, okay, we gotta figure out why this would happen. All right, so again, we have a demand curve. It's got a quantity, it's got a price. And again, we should always title it, although I might start abbreviating just to be efficient here. So this is Princess Unicorn. And it turns out at Christmas time, there's lots of advertisements, you know, all the kids want one of these. And so basically, tastes change, okay? So tastes, or changes in taste, let's back that up and make this similar to what we did a while ago. So that means changes in taste then will actually yield changes in demand. So they're, they're advertised on TV, every little girl wants one. Therefore, regardless of whether the price is $25 or not, you know, whether it goes up or down or whatever, we don't care. We want more of these dolls, okay? That indicates an increase in demand. And make sure we label the new curve D2 so that we demonstrate that that is indeed the second curve that, that makes the change. Even better, put an arrow to indicate the, the direction of change. Okay, that's if, if tastes change. And by the way, if taste goes the opposite direction, okay, we decide that uh, after Christmas, people realize this thing's kind of stupid, or maybe, oh, you know what? 
it puts your eye out. I mean, look at this. It's got an actual horn, and kids' eyes are popping out all over the place. So parents no longer want to buy this. So even if the price remains the same, it doesn't go higher, but people buy fewer. That's how changes in taste can affect that. Okay, let's, let's uh, demonstrate how changes in income affect it. All right, this one again is very straightforward. You got demand curve, quantity, you got price. I mean, I th and I think we've talked about this in class where, you know, we live in a society where we have so much money that we even buy clothes for our dogs. And not just clothes to keep them warm, but Halloween costumes. And um, at Christmas time, we buy them antlers. So we have all kinds of money in our economy. So if incomes rise, okay, so the change in income is positive, then that's going to basically increase the demand for a good. So incomes are higher. That means we're gonna have a good Christmas. So the demand curve shifts to the right. More people buy the Princess Unicorn doll than before, regardless of any changes in price, simply because we have more income. On the other hand, as incomes drop, you know, we're not going to waste our money on trivial things like the Princess Unicorn doll. I've got to buy uh, specialty health food for my cat. Therefore, I can't afford something silly like a Princess Unicorn doll. So the demand would actually decrease. So note, if we keep the price at $25, we got it right here, right here, right here. The price doesn't change, but the quantities do still change, okay? At the original curve, this quantity was being purchased. When the demand decreased, even though the price didn't change, there's fewer people buying them. So it looks like the quantity that people buy does change, but we do refer to that as a change in demand. Okay. So that's dealing with income. We can roll on and let's talk about market size. Okay. Um, demographics affect people's demand for things. So if we suddenly have an increase in children aged 6 to 12 years old, Okay, so there's an increase in kids that are 6 to 12 years old. Okay, it would stand to reason that more of these Princess Unicorn dolls are going to be purchased. But people aren't buying more of them because the price goes down. I'm just going to abbreviate this as PU now. Okay, they're buying more of them because there's more people. Okay. So again, $25 price, typically the number you would expect for people to buy. But because now there's more people, okay, there's going to be an increase in demand. So at the same $25 price, there's more people who want to buy the Princess Unicorn doll. So market size makes a difference. All right, and we have the expectations. Now expectations, go all over the place, all right? So expectations deal with the future. And it's the future price. Notice, now remember a demand curve is the quantities people are willing and able to buy at specific prices during a given time period. So if we extend the time period and say in the future the price will be different, that's not the same as the current price. So the future price can affect demand, okay? Our future income can affect demand and our expectation of future availability will affect current demand. So as an example, okay, we've got demand curve, Princess Unicorn Doll, okay, and again, basically they're $25, okay, but I think that in the future, they're going to go on sale because I anticipate that that horn is going to be putting people's eyes out, 
So I'm thinking to myself, I'm not going to buy that today. I'm going to wait and see if the price goes down. So if a whole bunch of people do that, then those whole bunch of people will buy fewer of these, even though the price didn't change. So that results in less of them being bought. Okay? So that's future price changes. So if we think the future price will be lower, that will actually decrease demand today. Okay? Here's another one. If I think I'm getting a big bonus towards the end of the year, and I haven't gotten it yet, but I think I'm going to get it, I may go ahead and splurge and buy my kids everything they want. So even though the price doesn't change, because I think my income is going to be higher in the future, guess what I'm doing? I'm buying more of these as a result of my expectations of future income. Okay. So if you think future income will be higher, that will lead to increased demand today. Availability. All right. This, the classic example here is, in fact, Dwight Schrute. Okay. He felt this was going to be a hot item. Okay. It's definitely a hot item. It may be difficult to find, you know, the closer we get to Christmas. So Dwight, being the smart businessman he was, he decided to buy as many as he could because they anticipated that they wouldn't be available in the future. So that actually also would increase the demand. Okay. So if we think the availability will be lower in the future, we will increase demand today. And of course, all the opposite things would be true as well. Notice again, though, as, as, as demand changes, people buy more. But notice the price did not change. It stayed at $25, OK? But, it's, but people still change their buying habits. Again, though, when the price does change, that results in changes along the exact same curve. So we refer to those as changes in quantity demanded. Now we got another example. All right, we've got the example where the demand for one good is affected by a related goods price. Okay, so for example, we've got. Princess Unicorn Doll, on one hand, P-U, okay? And then over here, we've got the Crazy Cat Lady Doll, okay? Who wouldn't want that? The Crazy Cat Lady, okay? So the Crazy Cat Lady, maybe, uh, let's say the, the Crazy Cat Lady goes on sale, okay? It is normally say $25 also, and it has a loyal following, so it normally, people will buy whatever amount that is, but then, like I said, it goes on sale, okay? The price drops to $15, okay? So a greater quantity will be purchased because the price was lowered. Again, that's point-to-point -point movement along the same curve because, remember, changes in price result in changes in quantity demanded. And when we're talking about changes in price, we're talking about the change in the price of that good with which we are discussing. Now, the price of the Princess Unicorn doll did not change, okay? It's still $25. But people's buying habits will change, okay? How many dolls does one person need? If I've got the crazy cat lady doll or action figure, then why would I also need a princess uniform doll? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. But on balance, fewer people will buy the princess uniform doll as a result of the lower price on the crazy cat lady doll. So we would demonstrate that as follows, okay? Price doesn't change for the Princess Unicorn doll, but definitely people will be buying fewer of them. So the change in the price of one, one item could affect the demand for the other. Most of the time it's common sense, okay? But sometimes it's not. Um, you know, there's other types of goods. So in this example, these are, these are called substitutes. Okay? 
So if the price of one substitute falls, that means the demand for the other will also fall. Okay? We've also got what are known as complements. And with complements, if the price of one goes down, then the demand for the other will rise. So for example, what if the accessories that go with the Princess Unicorn doll goes down in price? In that example, if the accessories cost less, people will not only buy the accessories, but they'll buy something to go with it, which would mean the Princess Unicorn doll will also be purchased. So I hope this helps. Um, you know, we could wrap this up. Uh, just, just, I mentioned taste and income and market size and expectations and related goods. Okay, if you, if you spell the first letters of all those out, it spells timer. So if you want to, to kind of use a rule of thumb, things that fit into timer will shift the demand curve, you know, and price changes will not shift the demand curve. Hope that helps. If not, we could end up like this. This is the non-econ 